This is Brother Joe Arthur, and welcome to our live service today. I trust the music and the message will be a blessing to you and your family. I trust God will meet a need in your life as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Welcome to our service. It's now in progress. Come on in. We have met to worship. Years I spent in vanity and pride, carrying my others crucified. this evening so excited about what God has in store for us we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer look forward to what God has in this we're going to have some young people going to be doing some things and uh, so looking forward to that let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing over this service Heavenly Father Lord we thank you for today thank you for this opportunity to be able to be here in your house Lord we thank you for those that are joining us by way of the internet Lord I pray that you'd make that place a place of worship for them God, I pray that you would flow freely from breast to breast here in this place tonight. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would have his will and his way in every aspect of this service. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Be with the choir as they sing. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You go ahead. Be seated, choir. Let's go ahead.
Amen. Let's all stand together as the choir comes down. Have a short time of fellowship. Let folks know we love them. We love the Lord. We're glad they're here with us tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a verse or two of the Baptist National Anthem. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. I see when we've been there, when we've been there, ten thousand years, shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise, and when we first Begun. Let's do it. I just began to live. I just began to live. When God's amazing grace came in, I just began to live. Old things have passed away. I took a brighter day. My name's recorded up above. I just began to live once again. I just began to live. I just began to live. When God's amazing grace came in, I just began to live. Old things have passed away. I have a brighter day. My name's recorded up above. I just began to live. Amen. Praise the Lord. You go ahead, be seated. Thank you so much for being here this evening. If this is the first time you've been with us, please uh, take a moment to just take out and fill out one of those visitor cards. We'd love to be able to keep uh, our church ministries to give you more information about that. And also, you return that to our people out front in the Welcome Center that give you a gift of appreciation. And we do certainly appreciate you being a part of the church and being part here tonight. I just want to say this. Didn't the choir do a good job on that song tonight? Absolutely. And I'll say this as well, doesn't Brother Tom do a wonderful job with that choir? I appreciate Brother Tom and the good the hard work that he does with that. And uh, let's not forget Sister Beth makes him sound really good. So, uh, but we do that. And of course and all these musicians but we are so thankful for what God has blessed us with uh, and we do have another ministry that we're going to be trying to launch this summer and you say well, we've not heard too much about it but we want you to be a part of it if you can we're going to be calling this summer saturation we're actually planning on knocking on about 5,000 doors over the next 10 weeks or so uh, in our church around our church area so if you'd love to be a part of that we're going to be starting that at 9 30 this Saturday so 9 30 this Saturday come and be a part of that we're going to be meeting over in the Timothy building to go ahead and uh, go over a few things, have a meeting, short meeting about that. Brother Joseph Motes is going to be helping us with that as well. He did a wonderful job this morning, but uh, we're so thankful for him and his his uh, willingness to be able to serve his home church here this summer. Uh, he said, uh, Brother Shane, we have about 118 days that I can serve God this summer, and I want to try to do all I can for my church during those 118 days and so he's doing a great big integral part of that as well then also in your bulletin you did have one of these flyers this is about our VBS 
It's uh, coming up uh, uh, shortly between June the 20th through 22nd at 6.45 to 8.45. And we're going to be having a good time with that, uh, ages 4 to 18. You can go ahead and register online. You can do that or see someone out front. They can be happy to help you with that as well. And then also, uh, our teenagers are going to be going to camp in the next few weeks. Praise God for Brother Tom and Sister Beth once again for going and taking our teenagers uh, to camp. But if you can, if you can meet, those young people would love to go have some information about next Monday they'll be going down to Pigeon or not yes thank you I've been sorry uh, summer what is that Teen Extreme, praise the Lord. That one, first, is June 13th through 17th. They're going to be doing that, having a meeting there. Parents, if you'll meet Brother Tom, Sister Beth over in the Timothy building, right after our service tonight, we'll be happy to get some information to you about that as well. And then also, this is the last Sunday, I believe, that we'll be going for the India uh, Children's Home, the offering that you've do, been doing that. Thank you so much for being a part of that. Then also, the transportation ministry, you guys are a great part of getting people here to come part. Brother Joseph has a new schedule out, didn't have a chance to to schedule that or talk about that this morning but to come see brother joseph after service and he'll get one of those schedules to you as well then also also you have that graduation there's a list if you have a child or grandchild that has not been you have not spoke to miss beth about that see her as well miss beth you're going to be really busy after service tonight uh but we're so thankful for them and the, those graduates. We'll be having that reception next Sunday evening, so it's looking forward to that as well. You go ahead uh, and enjoy that time. Now, Ben, come on down. Praise the Lord. Give these guys a hand, these young men that are coming down. So excited about what these young people that are doing. And Dustin, we're praising God for him too. Praise the Lord. But we so appreciate these young people. We're trying to train them, teach them in the way they should go and be able to take up the offering here and receive the offering for our churches. This is the church of tomorrow. We need to train them exactly in how we would be able to do. So we're so thankful for them. But let's pray over this offering and we're going to continue on with the service. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today for your blessings. I pray that you'd bless this offering. Uh, use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, God. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Multiply it in a great and mighty way that only you can. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. requested that I not sing but we got a variety of uh, y'all tonight um, we've got some older children in the group and some younger children in the group some that have sung in the chapel on Sunday mornings before but not in a public uh, not in the main congregation and we got brother RJ he's going to start us off this evening brother RJ
they all look really young, but I've been doing this long enough that I have students that were elementary kids when I started doing the children's ministry here that are engaged to get married and are in Bible college now. So I feel old sometimes myself. This is Miss Charlotte right here. been studying the epistles of John in uh, children's church on Sunday morning and this morning in 2 John our text was I rejoice greatly to see that thy children walk in truth and when I studied that out I don't see where it's too late or too early to start doing that so on either end young or old serve the Lord we got uh, a set of siblings here we got Will, Eva Rose and Harrison y'all go ahead No more in night. Now I'm 
we have my wife, Miss Macy, and Miss Michaela are going to sing for us now. Thank you all for hearing us. Uh, the last Sunday night in July, we'll have another youth night. And as that song said, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. But they'll find that at a young age. And if the local church will give them a place and opportunity at a young age to invest that, they won't develop a taste for the world and you won't see their mugs in the post office wall or on the news every night. So let's keep that in mind. I tell you, it, it, it's an awesome thing to see young people serving in the church. Uh, I don't know where I would be right now if people had not allowed me when I was young to serve in the church. And that's what my heart goes for these young people that desire. I'm with Brother Joseph. Boy, let them, let them sing. Let them play. Let them do, let them do for the Lord. Amen? Because uh, that will develop that taste, that love for the people of God and the family of God. We're so excited about Brother Tom's going to be preaching for us here in just a few moments. But just prior to that, we do have uh, Miss Jessie Carr is going to be singing for us tonight. I know she'll be a blessing to you. She's always a blessing to you. Her little girl just blessed my heart already. 
now she'll be able to sing and bless your heart tonight. You pray for me. Oh, 
to his name. Praise be to the Lamb of God. Thank God for the cross. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise his holy name. <laughs> oh, there's so many good lines in that song. Uh, death is crushed to death. Man, right now I feel like I ought to go back and preach. Let's behold him one more time. Amen. I really wanted to preach all week. I wanted to preach on to those that believe he is precious. And I wanted to magnify Jesus a whole lot. And all week long the Lord has put this thought in my mind. We'll be in the book of Judges chapter 16. And I cannot get past this. And I learned a long time ago from my father. And I've learned from great men of God like my pastor, Brother Joe, that if the Lord tells you to do something, you better do it. And uh, I need your prayers. Uh, This is a sermon that I, deep down inside, really would rather somebody else preach. And uh, for those of you that are mature and seasoned, as Miss Kathy says it, Would you amen me and help me and pray for me? Most of us have been somewhere like this in our life. And I've got a great burden in my heart for the teenagers. And I want to say to all the teenagers tonight, please put up your phone. and Please listen. Get a Bible and stay with me. And this is not just for the teenagers tonight on this youth night, but this is for all of us. And Man, I want God to work this in my life. Uh, but the truths here tonight, I believe, I believe God wants us to preach this with all my heart. And if I didn't feel like this is where God wants us to go, I wouldn't preach this. I would preach something else. But my life is not my own. My life is not mine. And I belong to Christ and I'm going to do my best to obey him. I want to say, first of all, thank you to Harvest Baptist Tabernacle and Brother Joe, Sister Julie for allowing my family and myself to be here. I don't remember yesterday too well. I don't remember last week too well, but I remember 17 and 18 and 20 years ago. I remember my youth. I can call name after name after name for my youth, and I can look out here tonight at some of you and Brother Richard's back there. Uh, But I remember very well on a snowy Tuesday morning in Lenore, North Carolina in 2005, February. No, it was March, 1st of March, because we got a snow, and uh, we were delayed at the school, and that day, Brother Joe walked in, and and uh, I got called to the big office. And uh, if you ever got called to the big office, you had done something foolish. And I was thinking, I did nothing foolish. I paid all the bills, I did the payroll, I didn't do anything stupid in my classes like I had done in the past. I could not be in trouble. And Brother Robert Setzer said, back there, Brother Tom. So I walked in the big office, and Brother Joe was sitting there, and he said, sit down, son. And I sat down. And we began to talk. And uh, God put me in a place that I could have never put myself. And what a joy it's been. Uh, my heart's desire is that God will let us labor together till Jesus comes and God will continue to do great and mighty things but I, I want to say thank you to this church for allowing my family to be here letting my boys grow up thank you Lord for letting my boys grow up in a church that loved them uh, y'all spoiled them way more than mom and dad did <clears throat> I remember when the boys were little uh, there was a member of this church came to me one Christmas and said, are you getting your boys a wee for Christmas? And I said, no way. I'm not buying my boys anything like that for Christmas. And so this church member said, well, do you mind if I do that? I said, knock yourself out. To which mama put restrictions on it. Boy, you, you young people ought to be glad that Miss Beth's not your mama. Our boys got 30 minutes a day on the wee game. And to get more time, bless y'all's heart. Lord, I feel sorry for you. To to get more time, they had to read to get more time. And I feel sorry for them because if they're like me, they don't like to read. Uh, 
I read because I have to to study. But this church has spoiled my family, and I say thank you. Thank you so much for being good to us, and what an opportunity. I looked at the calendar the other week, and it dawned on me to this day, June 5th, 2005 was our first Sunday, and there's people in this church. I'm going to preach very short in a minute, I promise. Uh, people in this church that mean the world to me, and uh, I am here today because of the Lord, Brother Joe and Miss Julie and their kind family and, and the church and good people here and thank y'all so much. Judges chapter 16, the Lord be in our help tonight, Lord please help us Jesus we need you, Lamb of God I confess I can't do this and I'm not my own, and Lord I pray your mighty touch would be upon us Lord and God may somebody be touched here tonight, I don't know who this is for and I don't know why but Lord I'm going to do my best to do what you've asked us to do. And I ask you, God, to exalt yourself and your great grace. And Lord, may we leave different tonight. For what you do will give you glory. Bless my pastor tonight as he's away. And God, you use him in Jesus' name. Amen. Judges 16, in your Bible, when you come to the book of Judges, this is a period of about 300 years where the nation of Israel has not come to the point of a kingship yet. And for 300 years, Israel is judged by judges who we would call military leaders. And for 300 years, Israel falls into their habitual pattern. They walk with God. They fall. Uh, they walk away from God. You can read all through the book of Judges, uh, over 12 judges in this book that God sends to judge Israel and to help Israel and deliver Israel, pretty much military deliverers for Israel while Israel falls into their apostasy and they serve other gods and then God draws them back and they repent and they'll serve God and then it's one big cycle. But is that not your Christian life or my Christian life? We walk with God, we live on cloud nine and then we fall to our flesh and we come get right with God and thank God for good grace and mercy. He'll draw us back, bring us back, love on us and then once again, Brother Don, for some reason, flesh and human takes over and we do the same thing that Israel did. And uh, here's, here's Samson, the life of Samson. One of the greatest pictures of what Peter writes in the New Testament, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, uh, Simon Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. To me, one of the greatest illustrations of those passages in the New Testament comes down to the life of Samson. Because you're, you're living in the time of apostasy in the land of Israel. When Israel has been unfaithful to the Lord, Judges 2.11 says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. It's a time of apostasy where they're unfaithful to the Lord and then they're unthankful to the Lord and ungrateful. Because if you look through the book of Judges, man, I had to study this out this week. I read this in a commentary and I thought, man, that can't be true. But Shane, I studied it out. You find several judges, individuals that stopped and thanked the Lord for their deliverance. But nowhere in the book of Judges do you find the children of Israel giving God glory for their deliverance. Uh, that's the nation we live in. We live in a nation that is unthankful, ungrateful. I told my boys growing up, boys, when you start liking girls and you start dating girls and they go out, would y'all please, please tell them to be thankful. If I'm going to take your girlfriends out with us and they're going to go eat, and Paige, you do such an awesome job. Thank you so much. That young lady always says, Daddy, thank you. We live in a generation that's unthankful. Israel didn't even stop to tell the Lord thanks for delivering us. They didn't even stop to worship God, Brother Gus. Ungrateful, unthankful. Living in the days of apostasy, it's a day of arrogance in the land of Israel. Does it, does it not stay true today? Judges 17, 6 and Judges 21, 25. The Lord put it twice in the book of Judges. And in that day there was no king in Israel. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. 
What arrogance. What arrogance. And yet still, still in the midst of their ungratefulness, in the midst of their unfaithfulness, in the midst of their apostasy and their arrogance, doing what was right in their own eyes, still God in mercy chose to deliver Israel over and over again. God in his great grace, God in his great endurance, looked down on Israel, his chosen people, the ones that he loved, the ones that he gave his heart to in the Old Testament, and God time after time chose to bring back Israel. Boy, we ought to thank God for that. Because time after time, Brother Richard, I've been like Israel. I was arrogant. I was unfaithful. I was ungrateful. And yet God brought me back. And as you study through the book of Judges, you look at who God used. That's amazing. And let me say, God in his sovereignty can use whoever he wants to accomplish his will. He chose Abimelech, an illegitimate son of Gideon. Gideon, the great warrior, had an illegitimate child and God chose to take that illegitimate son and use him as a judge. Now, men, let's just be honest. Deborah, Brother Joe, God chose a female. God chose a female to deliver Israel. I'm just going to speak personally. Brother Richard, I would prefer God use me to deliver my family rather than my wife. Thank you, Brother Richard. At least one man said that's right. What man in here would not want to be the leader and deliver his family rather than his wife? I thank God for my wife. My wife every morning is sitting up in bed when I'm half asleep. She's sitting up reading her Bible. And y'all know what that makes me want to do? Read my Bible and pray because I do not want my wife to be more spiritual than me. I don't want my wife leading the home. Not that she can't. She, she do a great job. Well, she does a great job at it. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. She does a great job at it. God can use whoever he wants to accomplish his will. And in his great grace, he used Deborah. In his great grace, he chose to use Jephthah, the son of a prostitute. God can use who he wants. And now God has chosen, you come to chapters 13 to 16, God has chosen to visit a young man and his wife, and she's barren, read chapter 13, the promised son of a barren woman. Well, that's not the first time in Israel's history. Not the first time God chooses to give them a son, a promised son to a barren woman. He's pronounced to be a Nazarite. He's not to shave his head. He's not to touch any unclean thing. He's not to drink wine or strong drink he's pronounced to be a Nazarite unto the Lord to serve God and then he's purposed to be a deliverer of Israel Judges 13 25 the last verse of chapter 13 says and the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Ashtel he is purposed by God the promised son of a barren woman to deliver Israel but unfortunately, Samson has a problem. Samson has the same mindset as the rest of Israel. I'll do what's right in my own eyes. Study chapter 14, study chapter 15. I want to get to 16 in a minute. But you see how Samson lived to himself. And if you study those four chapters, 13 through 16, you find that the greatest enemy Samson had was... Philistines. And in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the Philistines are a picture of the flesh, and somebody said it. The greatest enemy he had was himself. Himself. You walk through the corridor of his life and see where Samson walks in chapter 14. He goes down to Timnath, takes a Philistine woman of Timnath. He sought out in the goodness of God. If 
Brother Shane, if the Bible hadn't said this, this would be hard to believe. He went down to Timnath of the Philistines and took a woman. And Brother Earl, it was all in the plan of God. This is what, this is what the Bible says, verse 4 of chapter 14. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. God can do whatever he wants. Philistines are, are hovering over Israel, and God says, Okay, you want to live that way? I'll let you go down there, but I got a purpose in it. That blows my mind. God's going to let him go take a woman of the Philistines, and God's going to use it to turn evil to good. He takes the woman of the Philistines of Timnath. Then in chapter 14, uh, he comes upon a big old lion, tears the lion into pieces, leaves it dead. A few days later, he comes back. If you know chapter 14, he comes back, and there's a nest of bees in there that have made a nest of honey, and he breaks his vow. He goes down, takes the honey from that unclean beast, eats of it. Joseph, it blows my mind. It's amazing to me how God takes that and uses that, gives him strength. I mean, God, he's violated, he's violated his vow. And yet still God turns what was evil to profit God can do whatever he wants you say brother Tom is it alright to live that I know I'm just saying it blows my mind that God allows things to happen but if I look at my life and you look at yours you'd have to say it blows your own mind that God uses you too it's beyond me brother Shane why God uses me I'm selfish I'll admit it I'm selfish uh, I'm not always kind. Don't ride with me. You'll find out that you've got a horrible youth pastor that is over your children. Uh, and man, if they, if they ride with me, they're going to find out, Brother Tom, Brother Tom, man, you got problems, Brother Tom. I try my best to hit people when they run a light. It's, my light's green and yours is red and you shouldn't run it. I'm going to try my best. One of these days I'm going to hit somebody and get me a new car, amen. I have a flesh on me, Brother Richard. I'm with you, brother. I have a flesh on me that a lot of times is against God. And I stand amazed that God would use somebody like me. God used Samson in the midst of all this that he's doing. Then you come to chapter 16 in Samson's life, and look what the Bible says. Now Samson's about to face the consequences of living to himself. Chapter 16. Then went Samson to Gaza saw there an harlot and went in unto her and it was told the Gazites saying Samson has come hither and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying in the morning when it is day we shall kill him and Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them bar and all and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron I want to see that on the big screen when we get to heaven and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth. Verse 6, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. Now for the sake of time, follow me. Here's Samson. Follow the progression. And we'll see tonight how sin will take you farther than you want to go. Samson, verse number one, arises and goes down to Gaza. He's away from home. He's away from home. And Gaza, from where Samson grew up, in the city of Zorah, Gaza is 45 miles away. Brother Don, I looked it up this week. The average man can walk a mile with 2,000 steps. 90,000 steps away from home. Did he not one time on his way away from home stop and think this really isn't the best idea? <laughs> listen, young people, young people, listen to me. One step away from home is too far. Where did Samson make his mistake? First step he took. Toward Gaza 
was one step too many. I think back to Abraham and Lot, in the book of Genesis, Lot chose the well-watered plains of Sodom, and the Bible says that Lot left Abraham. What did he leave when he left Abraham? Lot left Bethel, the house of God. He's away from home. Lot left Hai, which was uh, on the other side of Bethel, and the word Hai means a heap of treasure. And when you walk away from home, young people, you leave a heap of treasure. Mom and Dad, when you walk away from home, you leave a heap of treasure. He left Bethel, he left Hai, he left the altar, he left the altar, the hallowed place with God, he left the herdmen or the brethren, the helpers in the faith, and he left Abraham, his headmaster. One step is too far away from home. I remember in 2005, Brother Gus, we moved here in June of 2005, been here almost a month, Brother Shane, almost a month, and I'm on the road one day making a visit, and my cell phone rings, and when I looked down, I thought, oh, this is such a great young person. This is going to be a great call. I looked at her name, Brother Shane, I'm talking about a young person that was in my youth group in North Carolina. I could call her any given day and say, I want you to sing Sunday, beautiful voice graduated head of her class could have done anything she wanted and Miss Kathy she got hooked up with a young man whose daddy drove a garbage truck and there's nothing wrong with that but she let one young man sweet talk her Brother Shane I remember the end of June 2005 we hadn't even been here a month I answered the phone and I said hey and I called her name and as soon as I said it Brother Jerry I hear weeping weeping on the phone oh brother Tom oh brother Tom I'm so sorry brother Tom brother Tom I'm so sorry it was only one time and I'm pregnant one step he's away from home he avails himself to a harlot he avails himself to a harlot and I'm not going to get into all this tonight but young people can you see Mom and Dad, hey, can you see tonight the spiral of sin? As he walks away from home, when you walk away from the house of God, the home place, you're spiraling into sin, and he avails himself to a harlot, and he's spiraling downward. And then you get to verse uh, number 4, and it says, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now he appeases himself in his habitual sin. Delilah's the third. The third. Samson knows better. He knows the word of God. He knows the teachings. Yet he's appeasing himself in his habitual sin. And young people, listen to me. Mom and dad, listen to me. Brother Tom, listen to yourself and the Holy Spirit of God. You will never get satisfied in sin. Yes, there is pleasure for a short season. But sin never will satisfy you. Thank you. I got some people behind me now. Sin never satisfies. That young man down on the street corner, first time he stuck that needle in his arm, he had no intentions to be in the gutter. He had no intentions to be high every day of his life. He had no intentions to rob a store to get some money to go get another fix and another hit, yet it spiraled on him and sin took him further because that sin never can satisfy. Young people, will you listen to me? Will you listen to me? Somebody tonight, please listen to me. Young people, you better be careful on that tablet and that phone and that computer. What's out there? Brother Shane and I were talking the other week. When I was a kid, I had to, I had to go try to find somehow to get in trouble. And I'm trying not to be vulgar in mixed company, but Brother Shane, I remember the first time a co-worker at Williams Brothers Lumber Company said, hey man, come in here, I want to show you something. I wish to God I'd never let him show me what I, what I saw. There's things that'll get in your mind, young people, and get in your conscience and get in your heart that you'll never get rid of. You'll never get rid of, and it'll never satisfy. Now he's appeasing himself in his same habitual sin. 
and he goes down to Delilah. And the word Delilah means in the Hebrew, amorous, erotic, languishing, and tempting. And she did. She did. He's fallen into a habitual sin. And he's consumed. But in his mind, he's thinking like many of us do, it's not going to hurt anybody. I might get hurt, but it, it won't hurt anybody else. Yes, it will. Your sin will not just hurt you. There's a consequence for it. There's a payment for it. Payday's coming. But it's not always you that has to pay the price. Brother Shane, we've been in ministry long enough. Joseph, you've been in it. Brother Joe said we've seen it over and over. One young man's choice doesn't just affect him. It'll hurt him. And let me, I, I thought of this the other day, Brother Shane, something my dad said to me over and over. Sin will hurt you. And hurt people somehow always hurt people. Sin will hurt you and hurt people somehow always hurt people. He's consumed with it. He's walking in the flesh. He's walking to himself. And in the midst of that, he abuses all rationality. Now there he is, Gus. There he is. And Delilah says, Samson, You love me. Samson, tell me where your strength comes from. She had to be pretty good. Most women are. Samson, son, she has been on him. She has harped on him. She has nagged on him. And finally, Samson says, okay, okay, okay. Take some green ropes and tie me up. I'll be like everybody else. And he's playing with fire. She ties him up. Samson, the Philistines are on you. He rips them. Brother Doug, he rips the cords and mocks them. Samson, you lied to me. Samson love me tie me with new ropes tie me with new ropes I'll be like any other man honest Delilah tie me with new ropes Samson the Philistines are on you now he's lost all rationality brother Don he's okay a little bit the first two times but now he's getting back toward the bow and the third time he says, Delilah, this is it, this is it. Delilah, if you'll weave my hair into the weaver's beam, you weave my hair, I'll be like everybody else. He's getting a little closer. He's playing with the fire now. When I was in high school, I learned, fools never learn. Play with the fire and you're going to get burned. Yes, I did. And that wasn't at Waffle House. Brother Richard, he's playing with the fire and she weaves his hair. Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. And the third time, Brother Donnie come out and whoop him one more time. And then the tears start to flow and she puts on like any other woman. Oh boy, I lost everybody right there. <laughs> Brother Richard shaking his head, you shouldn't have said that. Samson, tears are flowing. You don't love me. You've lied to me three times. And she so presses him, Brother Earl, till he breaks. He is spiraled to the bottom. He is spiraled to the bottom. And he tells her, never had a razor on my head. It's my vow with God. I'm a Nazarite. And it's from the Lord. 
and she puts him to sleep and cuts his hair, binds him and wakes him. Samson, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. Philistines, Samson, they're upon thee. And Samson awakes, the Bible says, and shakes himself at all other times. But he's been abandoned. And he wist not. The, one of the saddest statements in the Bible, Brother Joseph. Several. King Agrippa, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Simon, Satan hath the daughter to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Saul, the Lord hath taken the kingdom from you. And to me, one of the saddest statements in all the Bible is here in chapter 16. He arose and shook himself and wist not that the Spirit of the Lord was departed from him. He's lost all senses. Lost all senses. God's not there. God's not on him. And they took him and they plucked out his eyes. He lost his sight. He lost his senses. Brother Jerry, he's going to lose his soul. He's going to lose his soul. There he is, Brother Don, down in the chambers of the Philistines. And Brother last week, and I got to thinking, and I remembered something that I read a long time ago. Paul Harvey tells a story. Young people, listen now. Paul Harvey tells a story how Eskimos kill wolves. It's pretty graphic and gross. But an Eskimo that's having an issue with a wolf on his land, the Eskimos will take and kill a little rabbit, some small animal. They'll dip all the blood out in a basin, and they'll take a knife, and they'll coat it in that blood, and they'll freeze it in the snow. And Brother Jerry, once it's frozen, they'll go back and dip it in that basin and freeze it again. Over and over, into the basin of blood, freeze it into the basin of blood and freeze it until they completely cover that knife in blood. Then that Eskimo will take that knife and take it out and put it in the crevice of an ice block. And he'll sit back and wait. And when that wolf, with its keen sense of smell, detects that blood, Brother Richard, and comes to that knife, vigorously, over and over, that wolf will begin to lap that knife blade. One lick, a second lick, a third, a fourth, until his tongue is frozen, but his quench has not been satisfied. His thirst and his appetite has not been appeased, and he can't get enough. And over and over and over, Brother Don, that wolf will lap on that blade and never realize on its frozen tongue the very moment that his tongue has been split in two and that his own thirst is being satisfied by his very own blood. And the morning finds him dead in the ice. Sin will take you further then you want to go. And I don't know what it is, young people. Mom and dad is maybe to an adult. I don't know who it's for. But I want to tell you, sin will take you further than you want to go. And this should have been the end of Samson's life. This should have been the last statement. They plucked his eyes out. They put him down in the prison house. But thanks be to God, he got acquitted by grace. And in verse 22 of chapter 16, the Bible says, How be it? Woo! How be it? Grace, the hair of his head, began to grow. Thank God, thank God, I'm going to steal a line from my pastor. Failure is not final. Yes, you can, young people, you can get back to the cross. There is grace and mercy and forgiveness. Boy, the end of his story should have been, 
He died a wretched failure. How be it? How be it? The hair of his head began to grow. And he got a little boy and said, Son, they're partying all around here. But if you and in my right hand on the pillars, I'll just rest here on the pillars a minute. Had to be some fine party down in the land of the Philistines. Wherever they were, Brother Doug, in whatever house they were in, had to be a massive party because you studied them four chapters and all that Samson did in four chapters, the Bible says, man, what good grace of God. And in his death, Samson pulled on the pillars, shook the house, brought it down, Austin. And in his death, he slew more than in his life. That's pretty amazing because one time he took the jawbone of a donkey and slew a thousand. Listen to me. I'm not magnifying sin. You ought not live in it. It'll take you farther and it's a downward spiral. Young people, it'll never satisfy. But I want to say tonight, there's grace at the foot of the cross. Brother Jerry, come baby come I want Jerry I want you to sing I've wandered far away from God and now I'm coming home and I don't know who this was for tonight Lord I've tried my best to obey you and as we stand all over the congregation Lord would you please take the word of God Lord put it in the heart of the one tonight maybe more than one that need to hear this may they run to the altar of grace find help tonight God I pray this would not be true of any young person any adult in this service tonight God may sin not take somebody farther than they want to go may this be a night of reconciliation of peace and grace God may we run to the cross oh Lamb of God do tonight what I can't do Lord we'll thank you while brother Jerry sings and the altar is open whatever you need from God Greetings everyone, this is Pastor Joe Arthur from right here at the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesburg, Georgia. And I want to personally thank you for joining us today for our online service. I trust the singing, the preaching, the service was a blessing to your life. I trust that it birthed faith and hope and victory in your heart. And if you've tuned in today and you have any questions about your relationship with Jesus Christ, feel free to get in touch with us. We would love to help you come to know Christ and grow in the grace of God. If you're ever in the Atlanta area, I want to extend a personal invitation for you to come and join us. We're right off of Interstate 75 south of the city of Atlanta and the beautiful Lake Spivey community. And we would love to have you come and be with us on Sunday and enjoy the service. I would love an opportunity to meet you and your family. I trust you will pray for us here at Harvest. We have a very large mission program. We're involved in a lot of different mission projects. The Lord has been so gracious in opening so many doors and we need your prayers for wisdom that God will help us follow the path that he has laid before us. If I'm ever preaching in your area, I'd love to, for you to come and I'd love to greet you and let us know that you're watching our program. Again, thanks for coming by and join us again for our next scheduled program and we'll see what God will do in our lives.